Hi friends, my name is Rohan Barachandra. Today's video, lot of young investors suffering from trading addiction. F&O trading has become an addiction in India, especially for the younger age group. As per data from SEBI, 20 to 30 years age group doing F&O trading has increased significantly in the last 5 years. The following are the details. F&O traders as per age group. Below 20 in 2018-19, it was only 0.2%. But 2021 22, 22 to 23, 1.4%. 20 to 30 age group, 17.8% was the percentage of people doing F&O trading in 2018. But 2021 22 and 22 to 23, approximately 45% are doing. 30 to 40, earlier it was 40%, now it is reduced to 30%. 40 to 50 age group, 2018-19, it was 20.9%. 2022 23, 12.7%. 50 to 60, 10.6%, it was in 2018-19 and 2022-23, 5.4% only. 60 and above, earlier it was 10.3%, now it is 3.6%. So you can see the major increase is in the age group of 20 to 30 and they are doing the majority of the trading and losing a lot of money. In fact, there have been many cases where doctors are being consulted to get rid of trading addiction. There was even a case of a person being taken to Nimans for trading de-addiction because of the huge loss made in stock market trading but he continuously continued to trade. As per doctors, the following are signs that a person has trading addiction. Point number one, in spite of losing money, you put more money into trading. Point number two, if you feel restless or uneasy if markets are closed. Point number three, you start borrowing money from people to continue trading even when you do not have the capital. Point number four, you are not able to stop trading even when you try. Point number five, you lose interest in a job or business and want to do trading even when you are losing money. Many people may have trading addiction even without knowing it. Investing or trading may help you earn money to make your life more comfortable. But if it starts impacting your physical and mental health, it is not worth any money you can earn. Topic number two, India, the world's fifth largest stock market in terms of market capitalization, currently lost market cap in September month. It was one of the few markets in the world where the market cap fell. India's market cap fell to $4.9 trillion from $5.03 trillion. And this was the second consecutive monthly decline. This occurred despite Nifty rising. Even though Nifty went up, many of the stocks in the index fell as well as many mid-cap and small-cap stocks faced a correction. Nifty can go up even when many stocks fall since mainly the stocks which have higher weightage have to do well. Market cap change in September, Chinese market, it went up by 23.25%, huge rally in Chinese and Hong Kong markets, Hong Kong 14.3%, Germany 3.24%, France 3.14%, Canada 2.42%, US 1.84%, UK 0.32% and Japan minus 0.64%, India minus 2.42% is a percentage change in market cap. Many times you would have noticed that most stocks in Nifty would have fallen on a particular day. In spite of it, Nifty would have closed positively. The vice versa happens sometimes. In fact, today also Nifty closed negatively but mid cap and small cap indices closed slightly higher. Topic number three, yesterday SEBI approved the introduction of a new asset class designed to offer greater flexibility to fund managers and target investors with a higher risk appetite. The new asset class is being called investment strategies. It is aimed at high risk investors and seeks to bridge the gap between mutual funds and portfolio management services. The minimum ticket size for this product will be rupees 10 lakhs. The new product also aims to curtail the likelihood of unregistered and unauthorized investment schemes scamming people by promising unrealistic and high returns and exploit investors' expectations for better yields. The minimum investment limit for the new product will be 10 lakhs per investor across all investment strategies of the new product. So it need not be in one particular strategy, could be in multiple strategies in a particular asset management company. The new product is intended to add depth and variety to the investments. This new asset class will be aimed at investors with investable surpluses of Rs 10 lakhs to 50 lakhs with a minimum entry requirement of Rs 10 lakhs. 
Currently, portfolio management services, the minimum is 50 lakhs to invest. The asset class would offer higher returns with greater risk. Investment strategies would include long short equity funds which involve taking both long and short positions and inverse ETFs or funds. So more details of this will come in the next few days when Sabi releases the information. Globally, such strategies exist in markets like the US and Australia, but they are currently unavailable in India. Eligible mutual funds with at least rupees 10,000 crore in assets or managed by experienced fund managers would be permitted to launch these products. As per SEBI, the following are some safeguards. No leverage is allowed, no investment in unlisted and unrated instruments beyond those already permitted for mutual funds and derivatives exposure limited to 25% of the AUM for the purposes other than hedging and rebalancing. So lot of safeguards SEBI is trying to put even though it is meant for high net worth individuals. If you like this video, please click the like button and mention in the comment section, do you feel restless if you do not see what happened to the markets on a particular day? If yes, type yes in the comment section, otherwise type no. Thank you for watching this video. Bye bye, all the best.